In 1969, just a few years after Somalia's independence from Italy and Britain, a young commanding officer in the army named Siad Barre took power. Initially, for many Somalis, Barre's arrival was welcomed. The controversial president promised to rebuild the country after centuries of colonialism. The arts, theater, and especially music were one of the most effective ways of achieving decolonization. Somali poetry, songwriting, and the arts at large were often centered in Hargeisa, a city in the north. It was known as Hoiga Suganta, or the home of the arts, but Barre's goal was to place all economic, political, and cultural power in Mogadishu. He placed music and the arts under government control and invested heavily in a cultural revival. He pushed for reforms and passed laws to make Somali society more inclusive for women. As a result of all this, the 1970s and 1980s transformed Mogadishu into one of the most swinging, culturally vibrant capitals in the world. Somalia's golden age of music was born. If you took a stroll down the streets of Mogadishu of the era, you'd see a marble city, the color of pearls, which gave the city the title, the Pearl of the Indian Ocean. You'd see palm tree lined roads bustling with fiats and Indian rickshaws, and stunning beaches inviting Indian Ocean waters to its shore. At night, you could stop by the National Theater. Bands like Waberi would provide unforgettable soundtrack to Somalia's long tradition of theater and playwriting. Or you could stumble into one of the many luxury hotels where the bands of the day performed. The al Aruba Hotel, the Jazeera Hotel, the Juba Hotel. At any of these, you could hear the full spectrum of Somali sounds. Legendary composer Ahmed Naji would perform traditional Banadiri music with his adored singer Fadu Mokassim and the woman considered to be the best dancer at the time, Thanis Sheikh Dair. Sherero Band would play a bit of raucous horn-driven funk and soul. Iftin Band with singers like Mahmoud Abdullah Jerry Hussein and the revered Abdullahi Zulfa would serenade crowds with haunting Somali vocals and cosmic synthesizers. This was a youthful era. Young singers, musicians, and bands were taking the best aspect of Somalia's historic musical traditions and injecting the most popular global sounds of the day into the country's repertoire. In the late 1970s, when Somalia lost Soviet Union support and became a US ally, American music entered the airwaves. In came Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson. They captured the imagination of Somali youth. By the early 1980s, groups like Durdur Band had arrived. They created a distinctly unique genre and sound that mixed American pop with Somali styles. Abdinur Daljir is the band's founder. He says the idea was to globalize Somalia's sound. Somali music is set apart from so many music scenes in the world because it was dominated by women. Female singers like Fadu Mokassim, Hibu Nura, Magul, and Nimo Jama were the queens of their art form. In the 1950s, theater plays employed men to play the role of women, but talent could only be ignored for so long, and soon, women led the way. Kadra Dahir, one of the legends of her day, says that through music, women became the pride and joy of the public. This incredible music scene that graced Mogadishu for nearly two decades began to crumble by the late 1980s because of economic and political instability largely caused by external forces like the IMF and the global stalemate of the Cold War coming to an end. Musicians fled in numbers. Most now belong to the one million strong Somali diaspora in places like Toronto, Minneapolis, Columbus, London, and Dubai. Some musicians blamed their colleagues for not doing enough to keep the country's culture strong while the civil war raged. But music was still being produced in the diaspora, even if only to be heard by the Somali community. Today, Somali music is making a comeback. Danto is the style of music that was born in the Somali-speaking Ogaden region of Ethiopia. That style is still loved by Somalis worldwide and modern young singers in Hargeisa, Mogadishu, and the diaspora are taking a page from their predecessor's book. They're mixing the styles of today, mainly hip-hop and electronic music, with the rhythms and scales of Danto. As the country enters its recovery from almost 30 years of civil war, music will undoubtedly be one of the first areas of revival reconstruction. It remains the truest expression of the Somali experience.